Hey guys, it's Ms. Johnson here, and I'm here to bring you our video for notes three on solving systems using substitution. So we're solving systems of equations using a different method now. This is gonna be an algebraic method. So far we've talked about solving systems graphically, putting them on the same coordinate plane and looking for the intersection. But that might not always work for us. There might not be a clear point of where the intersection is. Um, so we have algebraic methods that we can use as well. And the first one we're gonna talk about is substitution. So um, here is <clears throat> our steps for solving using substitution. The first thing that we want to do is we want to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. So we need to look for a variable alone. Get a variable alone. Now, sometimes that's already set up for us, which is really nice, um, but sometimes we have to do a little work to make it look like that. After we get that variable alone, we're going to substitute the expression that it equals into the other equation. Substitute the expression that it equals into the other equation. And then after that, we will only have one variable in that equation, and we solve for the one that's left. So that's going to give us one, our first solution, or first half of the solution, I should say. And then the last thing that we do is substitute that value into either equation and solve for the other variable. So we need to get rid of one of the variables, solve for the one that's left, and then plug it back in to get the other one. So we're going to take a look at what that looks like. Um, now, one thing to consider is that we know we have that possibility of infinitely many solutions and no solutions. We saw that with graphing, and it was really easy to see when we had a picture of it on a graph, but what does it look like algebraically? Well, algebraically, if both variables cancel out, if both variables drop out, and what we have left is a true statement, then the statement has infinitely many solutions. Oftentimes it'll come down to like zero equals zero, or 12 equals 12. And if we have those two things, or have something like that where it's a true statement, that is true, zero does equal zero, then we know that we have a, a system with infinitely many solutions. On the flip side, if both of our variables cancel out and what's left is false, then the system has no solution. So that in that case, we'll end up with something that looks like zero equals five. Well, we know that zero doesn't equal five. That's not a true statement. So that means that that system has no solutions. So that's what it looks like algebraically. If both variables cancel out, we have to look at what's left. Is it true? That's infinitely many. Is it false? That means no solution. So now let's take a look at putting one of these into practice. If I look at number one, I want to start by looking th at the system and seeing if there is a variable that's already alone. When I look at those two equations, the top equation x plus 2y equals 8, the bottom equation x equals 2y plus 36. This x right here is already by itself. So our step one is done. Once you have a variable that's alone, you already are ready to move on to step two. So what I want to do for step two is this whole thing, this whole phrase is equal to x. 2y plus 36 is equal to x. So what I can do is I can get rid of x in this top equation and put this whole thing in its spot. That's what it's going to look like. So I'm going to take x out of the top and put this thing in its spot. That gives me 2y plus 36. Then the rest of it stays the same, plus 2y is equal to 8. And now I solve. Now I only have y's, and that's good. That's helpful. That's what I want. I can solve an equation for one variable. So now I'm going to put my 2y and 2y together. 2y plus 2y is 4y. So 4y plus 36 is equal to 8. And then I subtract the 36, and I get that goes away. 4y is equal to negative 28. And then I divide by 4 and I get y is equal to negative seven. All right, I've got my first variable, yay. Now, that's only half of my system. Remember that our solutions looked like an ordered pair of x comma y when we were writing them out 
from the graph, we would have an ordered pair like this. Well, this is the y part of that ordered pair, but I need to go back and find the x part. So I'm going to take this negative 7, and I'm going to plug it in for y in either one of the two original equations. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to put it in this bottom one, because the bottom one already has x alone, and that makes life a little bit easier. So that means I have x equals 2 times negative 7 plus 36. Now that's 2 times negative 7. So that's negative 14 plus 36. X equals, and X, uh, 36 minus 14 gives me 22. So then I put the whole thing together, the two parts. I have negative 7 and 20, that was supposed to be 22, sorry, um, 22, and my solution looks like 22 comma negative 7. Okay, that's the solution to my system. All right, let's try number two. When I take a look at number two, I have x plus 2y equals 15 on the bottom, and I have 2x minus 3y equals 2 on the top. Now, right away, I look for a variable that's alone. And in number two, I don't actually have one. None of the variables are by themselves right now, so I need to work on getting one by itself. So that's what I'm going to do first. I, since I see that this x has a coefficient of 1 on the bottom, I'm going to solve this bottom equation for x. So I'm going to move the 2y over to the other side, which le leaves me with x is equal to negative 2y plus 15. Sorry, that red's kind of hard to see on the green. I'll go ahead and make that a little easier maybe. There we go. It's a little better. All right, so... Now that I have an equation by itself, that was that step one in our step-by-step -step process. Solve one of the equations for one of the variables, get one variable alone. I have a variable alone now, I have x. So now I need to take the piece that's equal to x, which is this whole piece right here, and I'm going to plug it in for x right there. Okay, so I take this whole phrase and it goes right there. Here's what that looks like. The top equation is now going to look like this, 2 times, in parentheses, negative 2y plus 15 minus 3y is equal to 2. Then I solve that for y, because now I have one equation with one variable. I can fix that. I can solve that. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute these two, this 2 to both parts. So I have negative 4y plus 30 minus 3y is equal to 2. Now I have two y terms. I can put them together. Okay, so now I put those y terms together. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7y plus 30 is equal to 2. I'll subtract the 30. 2 minus 30 gives me negative 28. So I have negative 7y is equal to negative 28. And then I need to divide by the negative 7. And I end up with y is equal to positive 4. All right, so I've got my y value. Now I need to plug it back in and get x. So I'm going to take that 4, and I'm going to plug it back into one of my original equations. Again, I'm just going to use that bottom one because x has already got a coefficient of 1, and that just makes life a little bit easier. So what that looks like is I'd have x plus 2 times 4 is equal to 15. That's x plus 8 equals 15, and then subtract the 8. And I end up with x is equal to 15 minus 8, which is 7. So my solution, once I put it together, looks like 7 comma 4. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop our video here for today. We'll finish up the rest of our examples in class tomorrow. Please remember to go back to Schoology and take that quiz, and we will finish up the notes tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.